In this lesson, I'll show you how to apply slope, midpoint, and length to solve problems. The question reads, a ranger cabin is to be built in a flat wooded area near the straight road that connects the two campgrounds and a park. A new side road will connect the cabin to the campground road. On the park map, the campgrounds have the coordinates A and B, while the site for the cabin is at point R, and the coordinates for each of those points are written. Each unit on the map grid represents 500 meters. The question asks us to find the route that minimizes the cost and the number of trees that have to be cut down for the side road. Draw a diagram for this route. And B, find the length of the side road to the nearest tenth of a kilometer. Let's start with A. We need to find the route that minimizes the cost and the number of trees that need to be cut down. We will plot these points. Next, what I would like to do is draw a line that connects A and B. That will represent the road that connects A and B. Here's what I mean. And the route that connects R to this pathway should be a straight line that's perpendicular to A and B. That will minimize the costs. So let's draw another line that connects R to a point that's unknown over here. Notice that this line that I'm hovering over is at a right angle to the road that connects A and B. What we're looking for is the length of this road. If you combine both questions A and B, remember A wants you to draw a diagram, B wants you to find the length. Now the only way to find the length of this line is to find the slope of A and B and then take its negative reciprocal. That will represent the slope of R to this point, which we'll call C. If we have the slope for this line, and we know a point along that line, then we can find out the point of intersection. And by finding out the point of intersection, that will give us C and R, to which we can later find its length using the distance formula. Let me show you what I mean. Let's start by finding the slope A and B. We can find the slope by using the slope formula, and that is equal to y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, where m represents the slope. y2 here is 4.5 minus 8.5 over x2 is 10 minus 2. We'll need a calculator for this. 4.5 minus 8.5 divided by 10 minus 2 is 8 and that's equal to negative 1 over 2. So we just found the slope of A and B, and I'll take its negative reciprocal, meaning that I'll flip it and switch its sign. Its negative reciprocal is 2 over 1, and it's positive. 2 over 1, or simply 2, is the slope for the line R to C. Also, you're probably wondering what this is. That means perpendicular. So the line equation that represents RC needs to start off with y is equal to mx plus b. And we know its slope is 2, so I'll replace this m with 2. We have y is equal to 2x plus b. To find out what b is, and remember, we need a complete equation for a line. That way we can find the point of intersection. To find out what b is equal to, I'll substitute the point 6 and 1.5 into my equation. So I'll substitute the 6 into the x and this 1.5 into the y. 1.5 is equal to 2 times 6 plus b. If I solve for b, I need to take 2 times 6, which is 12, over to this side. So I have 1.5 minus 12 is equal to b. Using my calculator, 1.5 minus 12 is equal to negative 10.5. So the equation for this line, RC, is y is equal to 2x minus 10.5. Now I need an equation for A to B so that I can find the point of intersection. And to do that, I'll use the same strategy. So I'll make some more space over here. We have y is equal to the slope for AB which was negative 0.5 or negative 1 over 2. You can use either or plus b. And I can use either point a or point b to substitute into x and y. Let me use the coordinates that are smaller. We have a.5 is equal to negative 0.5 times 2 plus b. I'll 
find out what this is and bring it over to the other side. So I have 8.5. Half times 2 is negative 1. Bringing negative 1 over to the other side makes it positive 1. And we get a B value of 9.5. Therefore, our equation is negative 0.5x plus 9.5. We have two equations which we can now solve for the point of intersection. Equation 1 and equation 2. I'll write this down underneath here for simplicity's sake. And I'll use the method of substitution to find out what my point of intersection is. So I'll take this and substitute it into here where I have 2x minus 10.5 is equal to negative 0.5x plus 9.5. Solving for x isn't hard. I'll collect like terms, bring this over and bring that over. 2x plus 0.5x is equal to 9.5 plus 10.5. Using my calculator, 2 plus 0.5 is 2.5. That's 2.5x. And adding these up gives us 20. Solving for x by dividing both sides by 2.5, we end up with 8. 8 represents the x-coordinate of the point of intersection. And it looks like it almost. It was close, but not entirely accurate. So we have 8. To find the y-coordinate, we substitute 8 into any of the equations that we used. I'll substitute it back into here, or you could have substituted it into here. It's up to you. So we have 2 times 8 minus 10.5. That gives us... 5.5. Let's see if that was accurate. Almost. Our last step is to find the length of r to c. And I can use these coordinates along with the distance formula. The distance formula is this. d is equal to the square root of x2 minus x1 plus y2 minus y1 all squared Remember, the coordinates were 6 and 1.5 and 8 and 5.5. I've written them down here just for clarity's sake. x2 will be 8 minus 6 squared plus y2 is 5.5 minus 1.5 squared. This all gets square rooted. We have 2 to the power of 2 plus these two subtracted gives you 4. So we have 2 to the power of 2 plus 16. The square root of 20 is the distance, which is approximately 4.47. 4.47. And that's 4.47 units. Each unit represents 500 meters. So I'll take this, multiply it by 500 meters using my calculator. I'll just use 4.5 for simplicity's sake. We end up with 2,250, 2,250 meters. We need to change this to kilometers. 2,250 meters times one kilometer per every 1,000 meters. This means that the distance from R to that point C is 2.25 kilometers. And remember, they want it to the nearest tenth. So it's 2.3 approximately. And there you have it. That is how to apply slope, midpoint, and length to solve problems.